Well, you know, as we witness the destruction of extreme weather on land, under the sea, climate change is also destroying some of the most beautiful and beneficial aspects of our marine life. If you dive or you snorkel, you know how stunning these coral reefs are. But what you may not know is that they're, yeah, they contribute to our daily lives as well. Coral reefs protect coastlines from storms and erosion. They provide jobs for local communities. They are even a source of food and new medicines. But record-breaking ocean temps have devastated reefs off the Florida Keys, where hot tub-like water has triggered mass coral bleaching, turning colorful underwater gardens like these, you know, once full of life, into actual graveyards. And now there's this urgent effort underway to protect and restore these fragile ecosystems, like the work that's being done by my next guest, Enrique Sala. As a former university professor, he says that he saw himself writing the obituary of ocean life and quit teaching that to just try and save it instead. Enrique is the founder of National Geographic's Pristine Seas. It's a project that has already helped create two dozen of the largest marine reserves on our planet. Enrique, great to see you. Hi, Gaia. So a lot of people might not realize that coral is actually alive and that it provides life for such a large variety of sea creatures. Let's talk about this and, and tell me, as we look at these underwater pictures, which are amazing, by the way, just about your experience with coral reefs and, and this Pristine Seas project that you've created. Yeah, National Geographic Pristine Seas is a, a project that helps to create protected areas to save vital places in the ocean. You know, for the last 15 years, we have been working with local communities, indigenous peoples and governments to create some of the largest marine reserves in the world, including coral reefs, which are the rainforests of the sea. That means that they can harbor more species of plants and animals than per square mile than any other place in the ocean. But as you mentioned before, because of overfishing, pollution, and right now, as we can see it in Florida, global warming, they are at risk. So I'm just curious, a personal question before we get into some of the biggest threats. Why, why do you love this particular subject so much? I was born on the Mediterranean coast of Spain. I spent my summers in the ocean. And I remember when I was a kid watching the documentaries of Jacques Cousteau, he showed us images of these remote areas, old footage showing an abundance of life, sharks, dolphins, whales, turtles, big fish. When I was a kid, I didn't see a single big fish. I never saw a dolphin. I never saw a seal until I did my first scuba dive in a marine reserve that had been protected from fishing for a few years. And as soon as I got my head underwater, it was like diving in one of Jacques Cousteau's shows. Everything that was missing from the sea of my childhood was there. And that moment changed my life. That moment I realized that I had to work to bring back the richness of the ocean. Okay, you just pulled me in. That was such a beautiful answer. And I'll go to Mallorca any day uh, and live there. That is for sure. <laughs> so, Enrique, then, let's move into, you know, your, your, not only your love, but what you're doing here and what you see as the biggest threat to coral reefs right now. And, and what do you think can be done to protect them? Yeah, three main threats to coral reefs. Overfishing, which means we are taking fish out of the ocean faster than they can reproduce. Number two is pollution, agricultural runoff and chemical pollution. And three, and this is the biggest global threat, the one that is scariest of all, is global warming. Because the corals die when the water temperature is too high for too long, which is what we are seeing right now in Florida, reaching temperatures of 100 degrees and in other places. So we saw what happened to the coral reefs in, in the Florida Keys. And, and you are seeing, you know, are you seeing, I guess, any difference in the way Atlantic reefs are reacting versus what you're researching on your expeditions, particularly in the Pacific right now? In the Pacific, we have seen good news. There is a place in the South Pacific, the Southern Line Islands, that are fully protected from our activities from fishing and other damaging activities. And these areas are full of fish, full of 
sharks, groupers, parrotfish, surgeonfish, you name it. And these places were totally pristine, but in 2016, the strongest warming event ever recorded killed half of the corals within a summer. But when we returned five years later, the corals, I couldn't believe it. I got my head underwater. And as soon as my bubbles clear, I thought, what was there ever a warming event here? The corals had fully recovered. They bounced back because the place is protected because the big fish are there and they help to keep the reef clean and help the coral to come back. This is why while we phase off fossil fuels and replace them with renewable energies to stop the warming of the ocean, we can create these protected areas to buy us time. Enrique Sala, thank you so much for your time, your expertise, and we just, we love you in the classroom, but it's really amazing what you're doing now in the water. We're gonna continue to follow your work. Appreciate you so much. Thank you so much, Kira. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.